Whoa. That was fast. I don't even have my <laughs> others out yet. Huh. <laughs> Whoa. Fish on. I don't have my other rods out yet. And this is like the double dragon rig. Or at least I'm calling it the double dragon rig. And I'll show it to you. Oh, this rod is also lined incorrectly. I forgot to fix it. I missed an eye. But that's okay. Man, that was so fast. <laughs> oh, he's barely hooked. Hopefully I won't lose him. You start a video <laughs> before I'm even ready to really record or say anything I got a fish on I did want to start with action and this is definitely action nice little blue and I'm dragging this secondary channel like the, the main river ow splits here so we got a channel over there a channel over here and then a creek channel on the side. And I'm going up the creek channel. And this is the double dragging rig. Got a dropper hook, a float, and then the rear hook. And then it's got the double barrel swivel for the dragon weight. It's a dirty south dragon weight, and this is Slunger Cat. Slunger Cat? I always say his stuff wrong. It's Chris's company, and he's been having these made, and he sells these. I put the website up probably at the end of the video if you're interested in buying you know something like this or normal rigs and I got a 10% off coupon code but for now I want to get these out and actually maybe catch something bigger if I can get these in the water without this one catching the fish every single time and as you can see the wind actually has me kicked sideways so the wind is blowing this way and the current is coming that way coming down this way and the current is not strong enough to overpower the wind, which is okay. When I'm moving the boat, I should be able to keep this all in control. And a ton of bait here too. And I see on my sonar, that's why the catfish are here. All right, get the trolling motor, get me in the right direction. Get another bait on the hook here. It's really difficult to cast. So I just drop it down and let the boat pull it out. And I will go ahead and get this one out too. Big head or big catfish, hopefully. That's the right one. Whoa, too far. I like to put it at 60 feet. Now I only had this at 120 feet total. 
I don't have a rhyme or reason why I change, you know, how far out they are, but this is a smaller channel. So I'm not going to put them 120 or even 160 foot out. I'll just put them out, you know, 110 feet. I was moving pretty fast too. I haven't even checked my speed, but I'm going 0.8 miles per hour and caught that on the double rig. So I'm going to get the other side out and hopefully get some more fish in the boat. Now is a quick little update. I'm now actually in this little side channel and there's no bait. I did see a fish that was so big, the fish finder thought it was the bottom of the lake. I mean, it was huge. I saw it swimming. And then when it came on screen, you know, if, if you own a fish finder or a boat or whatever, it drops down and says, instead of being in 23 foot of water, I was in 10 foot of water. <laughs> that had to have been, I don't know, a giant paddlefish, sturgeon, who knows? Or a hundred pound class catfish, just enormous. Now, with no bait though, you know, the chances of me catching anything has probably gone down a little bit. I think the bait might actually be out in like the secondary main channel, which I will go to. This is not that long of a side creek. So I'm going to finish this drag and then I'm going to keep myself going, you know, downstream to up. So I will run down to where I caught that fish. And instead of going right into here, I'm going to go left into that channel and see what it looks like. Now, like I said, I saw that big fish and I see marks here and there. So this isn't completely devoid of fish, but are they, you know, resting here? Are they eating here? I guess I'll find out if I actually catch something between now and by the time I end this drag run. Another thing about this channel, it's only about three of my boats wide. So it's, you know, I don't know, 20 feet, 30 feet, 50 feet, 20 yards, whatever. That way is a foot of water. And then it gets down or up to a two foot of water on this side. It's a big underwater island. While this side is a bunch of just a chain of islands. I have caught fish here before and as you saw earlier, I caught a fish on this video. So at least I'm not skunked. Yellow. Come on, record. <laughs> the button's not recording. Double rig. Once again. fish <laughs> man maybe I should switch all of these to the double rig cool boats on course so I'm just going to Keep going. Maybe I'll get a double. <laughs> I wonder what the fight would be like if I actually caught two fish at the same time on this one. I might be on a pattern here because it's on the dropper hook again. So it's up off the bottom. Now I did start to see bait. Ow! So when I started seeing bait, I got a fish. So that's a good sign. Now I'm seeing more bait, so maybe I get another fish going through this next bait ball. 
All right, this guy's going to be a hundred pounder someday. Huh. So look at this again. Nobody wants that bottom piece. <laughs> I get another piece on here and uh, maybe catch another fish with this. And I'm hooking these like I hook everything else with plenty of the hook exposed. Okay, I'm cruising at 0.5 to 0.6 miles per hour now. Not quite as hot as uh, that first one. And I'm quite sure I'll probably get another fish in the boat, maybe. I am coming to the end of this. I may just uh, go just a little bit further and then I reel these up, run down river and do the main, the, the main secondary channel. There's so many uh, channels here. I'm quite sure there's fish here year round. Now the big ones, maybe they'll be here, maybe they won't. Stay tuned to find out. Something messing with the double rig again. <laughs> oh, hello. Huh. That was a good bite. I was taking my umbrella down so I could move. Hmm. Of course, when I start trolling the main channel I'm going to cross over the spot anyway because I'm now in the main secondary channel but now I've got a boat that's also going to run over all of this too and he's heading towards that creek channel on the side but I think I am going to reel all this up and I'm going to go even further than where I started because the split is actually way over there. So I'm going to start at the main river split and drag all the way here as far as possible, all the way into the wood. Because at the end here, the channel curves, it splits, and on the left is a lot of wood, and I can't drag through there. Oh, he's got a mud motor, and he's in probably a foot of water. I do miss having a jet boat. of bait and fish. 
In fact, there is a pretty big mark right there. Really fat mark. That's got to be either a big striped bass or a really, really big catfish. Cool. All right. I'm going to turn the boat around, go that way, and uh, yeah, maybe get a big fish. go. I think that is a head. Oh boy. Ooh. Of course the planer board might be making it feel bigger. The planer board is completely underwater. <laughs> The wind has stopped. I'm going, wow, this is slowing me down. I'm like at point three right now because I'm fighting this fish. But I was going about point five to point six. And I'm in 40 foot of water. So I am dragging deeper water, 40 foot of water. Over there it was like 20. Let's see what we got here. I've been seeing a lot of fish on the sonar. Some of them are probably striped bass. Yep, there's my planer board and there's the fish. It's not too bad. I almost would want a net maybe for him. Yeah, he's probably almost 10 pounds, I bet. Probably be better to use fish grips with this guy. Well, maybe an eight pounder. I'm not going to weigh him. But it might be the biggest fish of the day. It's got a lot of mud on him too. That means they are on the bottom bottom. But not bad. Very nice. Tennessee River Blue Catfish. Cool. Three in the boat. Now I need to get a big one. This would make a good kicker though, for a tournament. In fact, I just did the King Cat tournament yesterday. And I think we came in the top 20. They haven't posted the results yet, but we had, I think 43 pounds. And a lot of people had like, you know, 30 or less. But the top guys did break 70. I think it was like 80 something to win. Which is pretty good because last year, this same tournament, it was like 47 pounds or something to win. So that means my lake might actually be recovering now. I don't remember what the big fish was, but I don't think anything over 50 was brought in. That was a good amount of fish that was brought in as a whole for that tournament. Actually, I think that was a big chunk piece, but I'm going to put a head back out. And I forgot to tell you about the tournament. There was about 50 boats. And I was not in my boat. I was in a buddy's boat. We caught three nice flatheads. We had a pretty nice blue too, but we had to let it go because we caught a flathead that was bigger than the blue. Now maybe next year, they will break 100 pounds at the tournament. It just takes time for the big fish to get big. Huh. 
cooler bike. I <laughs> smashed my cooler lid down and got a fish on the double dragging rig. got weight on him but I am moving <laughs> I'm trying to bring him up a little bit slow because this is still 40 foot of water I don't want him to get the bend and it's probably not that big of a fish it didn't pop this thing on there. Only downside to planer boards, you might accidentally, you know, give slack to the fish, which could pop the circle hook. <laughs> there we go. We're getting a little bigger. I don't know. These are all probably the same size. They're really at that maximum of, you know, something you'd want to keep and eat. And in this waterway, probably wouldn't want to keep anything, but this is probably a 10 pounder. Where are my fish grips? I want to get my fish grip. Easier to manage them this way. If it was bigger, I'd get the net. Not bad. Much, much better kicker than the other one. Or maybe the same size. Could be the same fish. He's got a lot of mud on him. <laughs> I hope it's not the same fish. That'd be crazy. Well, that's cool. Nice. Getting the numbers today. Now where's the size? That one was on the bottom hook, the bigger piece of bait. I put a smaller piece on here and put a bigger piece on the back. And I think I continued to do that just to make this maybe drag better, I guess. I don't know. I did uh, fail to mention there's a little clip on there. It's not a knot at the double barrel swivel. It's a clip. And it's holding up pretty good on the smaller one. Now Chris is the one behind Slugger Cat, Slunger Cat or whatever. And I think that's how he rigs all of his gear. Even if it's just a traditional bottom rig is with those clips at the swivel. And he has caught some monster catfish. So they hold up good. Hey, he's got a bite on this one. These side ones are rigged by me. It's always cheaper to rig it yourself, but sometimes you just don't have time to rig. So it's good to buy pre-rigged from somebody else. Let me show you the package of the double rig. I have shown this before in previous videos. Slunger Cat, S-L-U-N-G-E-R Cat, outdoors. I don't have the website memorized, but if you can find the Slunger Cat website and use the coupon code Billy10, you get 10% off of everything. And this is a double hook dragging rig, A dot hook, 
80 pound leader line. Maybe that will come out on the camera. And it's kind of bright out here. Oh, of course, I'm talking to you guys while I got a fish on. And I'm letting this one out too far. I think he's still there. Ooh. Maybe not. Yeah, I think he got off. He probably had a hold of the back of the head. You gotta be a pretty big fish to eat that bait. And that's what I'm looking for. I want a bigger fish. Now my rig here, this one has a three-way. I really don't like these three-ways. I'm going to start using, if I make them myself, the double, uh, the double barrel swivel route that he's using. And I could get away with just a barrel swivel because this has a clip on it. These Dirty South dragging weights have a big clip. You could use it with just a swivel. This is 80 pound leader line and uh, eight dot hook. This is the Team Catfish double action circle hook. I don't know what these hooks are, but they're similar to this one. And a lot of companies are replicating this hook now, which is good because I think this is the absolute best designed hook there is. It's all because it has a straight eye. The eye with a snell on it will have like a little bit of a trigger action whenever something eats it. And if you don't want to use snell knots, you can use a polymer knot with it. Now if you use a polymer knot with a hook that has a bent eye, it becomes an unhooker because it ends up going the opposite direction of where the tip needs to go. I think I'll bring this one into 120. And I have these outside ones at 115. Oh, I got them at 120. So I'll do this one, 120. This is a wider and deeper channel. Okay. All right, we're at the beginning of that little creek channel. So that little creek channel that I went up first is right over there. This is the split and the main channel is right here. Let's see, it's about, it looks like it's 300 foot wide and 40 foot deep. It is definitely different than the creek channel. Nibbling at the head. Oh, there we go. Wow. <laughs> Definitely hooked himself. Or not. Uh-oh. Huh. Hit and a miss. It's a big head, so... Uh, little ones will grab it. Even pulled the planer board under. I'm surprised it didn't even pop. That's kind of funny. Alright. Just let it back out and... Uh, <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe the next one. Oh, hi. Looking at my position and get smashed on the double rig. <laughs> uh, uh, hit button, yep. Cool. I probably should have reeled down on this. Mmm. Ooh. Maybe I have two fish? <laughs> I 
say that's bound to happen on this rig at some point, get two fish. Now I know I, <laughs> I sound like an advertisement all the time when I'm talking about these rigs, but this is the first time I've used this. I've been wanting to use it for a while. And I keep getting distracted with other forms of fishing or, you know, trying to catch a flathead. He ate the dropper hook, the first one, the little bitty piece of bait. But yeah, I know, I sound like an advertisement. But I mean, <laughs> now it does take more than a good rig to get a fish in a boat. You gotta have the right bait, you gotta know where the fish are. And I'm using fresh skipjack herring. It's leftovers from our tournament, from the King Cat tournament. It's good bait and it catches fish. If you would do me a favor, leave a comment below if you have actually bought something using my coupon code. I'd like to know. I don't have immediate access to knowing if anybody's using my coupon code. I have to ask Chris to look it up. I would like to know, are these good rigs? Have you bought anything from his website and, you know, even without my code, any of his other rigs? What do you think? Is he selling good stuff? Just leave a comment below. Oh, hey. While I'm baiting up, something hits the head and doesn't get hooked up. Must be a lot of these smaller fish here. A snag or a fish? And it not only did it get off, it popped the planer board. They really want these heads. And that does answer the question. Was the head still on here? <laughs> Yep, head's still on there. They are tearing it to shreds. I'm just going to put it right back out. Oh, hello. Oh, it's pulling drag. Oh, shirt hook. Say when it was pulling drag like that, it was probably hooked. On the double action circle hooks, or at least this style, you can do kind of a hook set with it. I haven't even got this other one out yet. Might be a bigger fish. I'm not wanting to come up. Yeah, this might be the biggest fish of the day, maybe. Whoa, my net is a mile away from me. <laughs> Come on, 
going to come up. Hopefully I didn't bring them up too fast. Ooh. Oh yeah. That's uh that's what I'm looking for right there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need a net. Come on. I would have had my buddy Clint with me today, but uh, he has car problems. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the fish we needed in the tournament yesterday. Wow. <laughs> and it's on the double hook dragging rig. All right, let's get a weight on this guy. All right, to weigh a fish like this. I use the net. That way I don't hurt the fish. I'm not even going to guess his weight. <laughs> Using the net as a cradle. Twenty-five pounds. So twenty-four pound big blue catfish. I'm quite sure this is bigger than the biggest flathead we caught yesterday. What a fish. Very nice. All right, come on, let him go. Let him grow. And take a shower. What I've caught today would have easily put us in the top 20. Now I think I am going to put another piece on here, put it out there and finish this drag. Just about done. All right, I am at the end of this underwater island and I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it. It's been pretty good in, I don't know, a quarter of the time it took for the tournament yesterday, I've caught more fish and heavier fish. Maybe it's because it's a different day. It was really chilly yesterday and today it's, uh, it's quite warm. So it is a little bit different out here on the water, but I do know the bait was all around here yesterday too. So as always, I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to actually watch my video. I really, really appreciate it.